and welcome to the interview dialogues of the Trumpet of Truth. I'm your host, Li Cheng. And today, we're talking about the visual artworks produced by the Church of Almighty God with Professor Massimo Intervenian, Italian scholar of New Religious Movement, founder and managing director of Center for Studies on New Religions. Good afternoon, Professor Intervenian. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon. You are an expert in the study of new religions, and religious visual art is one of your fields of study. I've heard that you are interested in the Church of Almighty God's artworks. Last December, you published an article on WRSP online encyclopedia about these artworks. I'd like to find out a bit more about why this is. What do you find so fascinating out of these works? Well, I believe there is a prehistory in it that in uh, the 1970s, very few uh, historians of art started noticing that uh, uh, very significant art was produced by, by the new religions. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually in a disproportionate amount, meaning uh, uh, new religions are minority religions, but they contribute to the arts uh, uh, in proportion in a much bigger way than the atheists uh, or the, the old religions. Uh, uh, that was even a discovery which was resisted by art critics, uh, uh, because uh, uh, there was the general idea that the modern artist uh, is very often an atheist. And uh, it came out that this is not true. Uh, if we uh, have a look at uh, history of art, but even of modern art, uh, we see that the real atheists are very few. Uh, it is true that many uh, art uh, bodies, artworks, uh, are no longer perhaps produced in the traditional churches and religions, but uh, uh, the new religions mm, started in the 20th century or the 19th century really contributed very significantly uh, to the world of art through their uh, production. So mm, uh, what happened to the Church of Almighty God? Because this model would predict that being such a large uh, fast-growing church, the Church of Almighty God will produce its own art. Uh, that didn't happen uh, for many years uh, for a very simple reason, because of the persecution. Uh, because of the persecution in China, you cannot have buildings uh, and uh, you had other things to do. Uh, trying to survive the, the, the cruel persecution of the CCP, uh, didn't leave much time and leisure to, to produce art. So, um, uh, as soon as you started having uh, significant communities uh, uh, abroad, in free countries, where you may have had some problems as refugees, but you were not persecuted, uh, the model worked in the sense that uh, uh, being a growing and large uh, new religion, the Church of Almighty God started producing uh, works of art. So that's perhaps uh, is an un unintended consequence of the persecution of the CCP that generates a diaspora abroad, and in the diaspora abroad, the art started flourishing. Of course, a second uh, unintended consequence has nothing to do with art. Is uh, non-Chinese started returning to the Almighty God as well. And that's also uh, because of this significant uh, uh, presence of diaspora communities. Perhaps I would say that your artistic production really started 2013, 2014. In, in few years, there is an astonishing uh, uh, growth of this production uh, in terms of number of movies and in terms of number of paintings. I know that the paintings are mostly used for the movies. Some of them decorate uh, your uh, uh, churches and uh, offices, uh, 
but nonetheless, we are speaking of uh, thousands of paintings, uh, uh, many of them of very good artistic quality. So I would say that uh, a distinctive uh, uh, body of art is being uh, created uh, uh, very rapidly and has also been acknowledged uh, in the sense that some of your movies won uh, uh, awards in uh, a Christian film festivals, which is very significant because they recognized the, the good quality uh, of your movies and gave uh, these awards. And um, normally it is an important step in the uh, maturity and globalization uh, and mainstreaming of uh, uh, many religions uh, when they start having their own distinctive body of works of art. Yes, just like you said, the visual arts of the Church of Almighty God progress rapidly. New artworks keep being produced, but I have to say, without the blessing of God, without the work of the Holy Spirit, no one could have done this. So, let's first talk about the paintings of the Church. I'm sure if you would uh, exhibit them or create websites mostly devoted to your paintings, that many people would uh, uh, admire the quality of these paintings. As I say, there are um, two main bodies, uh, or perhaps three, uh, of uh, paintings uh, I've been exposed to. Uh, some are landscape painting, but uh, in, uh, uh, in a traditional modern uh, uh, quality and uh, you use um, uh, in a significant way computer assisted drawing and that reminds me of there was an important exhibition of Hockney in uh, a British artist in New York I visited at the Metropolitan Museum and uh, he also he is now old, but he's using a lot the iPad for creating work. You really see uh, the, 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 there is a, a tendency in, uh, in modern art in the use of computer-assisted technology, particularly for producing landscapes, which is quite significant. And uh, I'm not suggesting that your artists are inspired by any particular Western artist, but it's something which is in the air to, to take advantage of the, the computer-assisted uh, technology to produce this landscape or scenarios with very uh, bright, uh, warm colors. So in a way, your artists are part of this trend. Then, Second, there is the biblical uh, scenery, and uh, here uh, your images are much more traditional. I uh, particularly like, the, 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 if you want to use this expression, the Christ knocking at the door, which is uh, very much reminiscent of uh, uh, British pre-Raphaelite uh, productions of the late uh, uh, 19th century, William Holman Hunt, etc. And uh, uh, in this painting, uh, it's, uh, it's really a new take uh, at uh, uh, old iconographic uh, uh, tradition. In some other paintings, uh, uh, of course, we see the distinctive theology of the Church of Almighty God. And uh, we see very clearly a distinct relationship between the creation of the artist and the word of Almighty God. Uh, uh, one uh, painting, uh, uh, for instance, shows uh, uh, Adam and Eve uh, clothed. They discover they are naked and they receive uh, cloths, uh, cloths made by God's own uh, hands. <clears throat> and this particular in theology of Church of Almighty God is very important uh, because uh, it shows that God uh, takes care of uh, human beings 
even uh, if uh, uh, God can um, chastise human beings in some occasions, but uh, takes care of human beings, uh, and uh, even uh, uh, God's care of humans is so delicate uh, that he makes the clothing uh, uh, with his own hands. Uh, another uh, similar image is uh, uh, Noah, Noah's Ark after the flood. And here I believe for interpreting these paintings, uh, uh, some knowledge of the theology of the Church of Almighty God uh, is needed because the, the real center of the painting is not Noah. Uh, it's not the animals as colorful as they may be, but what is in the center of the painting is the, the rainbow. Uh, many art critics uh, uh, who studied Christian paintings in general, I'm reminded of uh, the Christian art critic from Austria, uh, Hans Sedelmeier, they say in the Christian paintings there is always a center. Sometime in the modern post-Christian painting there is no center, but in the Christian paintings look for the center. And in this painting of Noah after the flood, the, the center is the rainbow. And uh, the rainbow was sent by God to, to uh, announce that the, the world will not be destroyed, uh, which is an important part of theology of Church of Almighty God. Uh, and it's different from what uh, other churches believe. The Church of Almighty God doesn't believe that this world will be destroyed. Yes, there will be catastrophes, but uh, this world will be transformed, not destroyed. And uh, so uh, the rainbow, in a way, is a symbol which is still true today. So an understanding of the theology of the Church of Almighty God uh, will really help us to understand the painting uh, and to understand where in this Noah after the flood uh, uh, painting uh, where the, the, the center is. Because uh, as I say, art historians uh, have really characterized the Christian art as having a center. And sometimes the modern art refused to have a center, which is also a choice. It's, uh, uh, they try to produce something completely different. But in Christian art, normally paintings call your attention to a center which may not be the physical center, may be a, a theological center. And in this painting of Noah, the center is really uh, the rainbow. Like uh, in the painting of Adam and Eve, uh, uh, the clothing is the important part because it's through the clothing that God manifests his uh, uh, delicate love for uh, humanity. Yes, indeed. The majority of the paintings are produced based on the Bible and the Almighty God's words, just like the image, the rainbow covenant. It reminds me of God's words. In this covenant, we see God's heart. We see that God's heart was in pain when he destroyed this humanity. From that point, God placed all of his expectations of humanity on Noah's family, hoping they could live under his blessings and not his curse, hoping that they would never see God destroy the world with a flood again, and also hoping that they would not be destroyed. From the Rainbow Covenant, we can see the Creator's love for mankind. Well, uh, the punishment uh, of God and the sadness of God uh, is something the audience uh, should infer from the symbols because you respect uh, a honor tradition uh, in uh, Jewish art uh, and uh, also in most Protestant art, Catholics are sometimes a little bit different, particularly in the Renaissance with Michelangelo. But uh, uh, Jews and Protestants, Christians, uh, normally they do not represent uh, the God of the Old Testament. 
you never see the face of, of course you see the face of Jesus but that's in the New Testament uh, what you call uh, the age of law uh, uh, the age of grace uh, as opposite to the age of law but in what you call the age of law most Protestant artists will never represent God and Jews of course will never represent uh, God and I believe you respect this tradition. You still maintain this tradition of not representing the God of the Old Testament or Jehovah. You represent, of course, Christ. And uh, so if you want to understand the God uh, in the age of law, uh, we have to look for the symbols. So uh, there are uh, symbols that uh, the flood happened, uh, there are symbols that Adam and Eve have been kicked out of the Garden of Eden, but we don't see God doing this. So uh, we should uh, be able to read the symbols in your painting uh, and to understand the reasons for God's punishments uh, and uh, the sadness of God in administering these punishments from uh, a reading of the symbol. Professor, as we've already mentioned, the paintings created by the Church of Almighty God are primarily used in its movies, videos, and musicals, which have been uploaded to the internet. They are used to proclaim and testify God's work of the last days and have attracted the interest of more and more people around the world who wish to find out more about Almighty God's work. Uh, while uh, your movies are enjoined also by many who are not members of the Church of Almighty God because uh, uh, they've been presented in international festivals uh, and I also believe that the number of downloads of uh, these movies on the internet uh, indicate that they are seen by uh, many who are not members of the Church of Almighty God. So much more than the paintings, uh, uh, the movies uh, communicate uh, to uh, an external uh, audience. And uh, I believe uh, there are two things to say about this. First, it's clearly uh, these movies are from the Church of Almighty God. I mean, if you know the Church of Almighty God, you can understand that uh, the message being conveyed is the message of Almighty God. But second, uh, uh, the movies, and that also contributes to their artistic quality, uh, very often speak of universal uh, values, uh, the, the goodness, the kindness, the love, the, the family, uh, the, ch the ch relationship between the children and the parents, the relation between uh, serious life uh, and the uh, modern life, which sometimes uh, is mostly about having fun and losing your time. So these values are universal are not only in the Church of Almighty God and can be recognized also by non-members or people who go to Christian film festivals. They, they don't know the theology of the Church of Almighty God, but they recognize there is a good message. There are other movies you did about internet addictions or problems to families after divorce. Uh, uh, of course, there is always a distinctive uh, reference to Almighty God, but these are problems. Uh, millions of people, perhaps the majority of the population in the West, um, encounter. And so it's not surprising uh, that people who know precious nothing about the, the Church of Almighty God, uh, when they see these movies, say, oh, they've been done by people of good spirit. We want to learn more about them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Professor, good artworks have a positive effect and a positive influence. This is the result of God's guidance and His blessing. These movies are beneficial to each of us. Well, I believe your movies fall into distinct category and uh, in general, uh, as you um, 
say they have devoted considerable time to study the sociology of the art and the, the art in connection with religious movements. Uh, there is always a delicate balance uh, uh, between the message and the technique because uh, uh, of course for religious people the message is more important but the message you can print without any illustration any music uh, and that's the pure message now some people uh, would uh, just like this as it is but uh, particularly in the modern world many people uh, will find very difficult to focus the attention on a sheet of paper with words uh, and they will need at least in the beginning to be reached by the message uh, with sounds, uh, with music, uh, with dances, with images. So th there is the message in religious art but there is also a technique for communicating the messages. Uh, in the Catholic Church, we had a Pope in the 1960s, 1970s, called Paul VI, who was very much interested in the art. But he also said, we live in the civilization of images, meaning you give people an important text they will not read. But if they see bright images, they will start being interested. So you have the same problem as everybody else in religious art, uh, uh, how to keep the message uh, uh, the center of the production, but how to use techniques uh, that will be attractive to people uh, and uh, uh, clothe the message with uh, quality images and the quality music uh, uh, to attract the audience. So, uh, but there is, as I say, different categories. There are different categories of your productions. So some productions are very simple. There is a, a, a minimum of technique and a lot of message. In some cases, for instance, the words of Almighty God are just read by some person who has a good voice and can write it in an uh, expressive way. Uh, and that is a lot of message and not a lot of technique. Mm -hmm. uh, and in other cases, uh, like Xiao Zhen, uh, you have a lot of technique. Uh, and of course, uh, you have the message. Uh, but the message is conveyed by uh, uh, a very rich uh, uh, technique. Uh, in the middle, there are uh, documentaries, uh, like uh, Chronicles of Religious Persecution in China. So all these things really happened. And so we normally, in, um, in the West, it will be called docudrama, uh, or a dramatization of uh, something which really uh, happened. And so the, 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 I believe that's a very valuable work. But the value of a docudrama is also in its capacity of telling uh, the truth, in telling a true story, and that's precisely what happened. So I also believe Chronicles of Religious Persecution in China did deserve the awards it uh, won, uh, because uh, it's, uh, uh, it's technically very well realized. I mean, the, the, the audience is really involved in what is happening. Uh, but also it maintains the, the main rule of the docudrama, which is to, to tell uh, stories that can be verified uh, and are actually true, really happen uh, outside of the screen. Yes. Mm, Professor Intervenian, I've heard you are a big fan of musicals. Of our musicals that you've seen, which impress you the most? Would you like to share with us? Take uh, the, the, the Xiao Zhen uh, music. Xiao Zhen story. Xiao Zhen uh, story musical. Uh, it's not surprising. It has been very successful uh, also among people who do not belong to the Church of Almighty God uh, because uh, it's a very high technical quality and uh, the persons who participate, they may be professional or amateur, but uh, the quality is very high. And also, uh, of course, there are references to the Almighty God, uh, but uh, the general uh, plot, the general 
outline of the story, uh, it resounds to, to universal values that many people can share and also to problems uh, young people encounter today, which I believe everybody can understand. And, and, uh, new heaven and new earth is really about the future of humanity and uh, this eternal struggle between God and Satan. But uh, in the end, we are offered a glimpse of uh, uh, what will happen next uh, with the coming in the flesh uh, of God as Almighty God uh, and uh, the possibility uh, for some to be purified uh, and uh, to enter in a future everlasting kingdom. Uh, in the meantime, uh, there will be the catastrophes uh, prophesied precisely in the book of Revelation. So, mm. This is, uh, of course, a modern way of taking on a very old theme because the, what is discussed in New Heaven and New Earth, uh, in a way, is the essence of Christianity. Uh, it's uh, what the meaning of this world, why in this world uh, something goes wrong. Can we enter in a different uh, world? Uh, where the, the, the works of Satan uh, would be defeated. So these are eternal themes, in, particularly in Christianity. But uh, uh, I, I'm not aware of uh, any other discussion of these themes in the form of a musical. So we have a very modern way of uh, interpreting these traditional themes. Uh, and I believe the musical is ultimately uh, successful uh, in uh, conveying this sense of urgency uh, and this sense that in a way we are living in the last days, even if uh, we should always be careful when we say last days in reference to the Church of Almighty God, because uh, uh, many people, including scholars, uh, when they hear last days, uh, they immediately compare with religions uh, uh, that predict that this world will be destroyed. Why well, you do not predict that the world will be destroyed, it will be changed. Yes, that's true. Mm, you know, in the Church of Almighty God, God has prepared talent from all kinds of industries. Most of them didn't graduate from specialist institutions. They're just doing what they love. With, when they first started producing these works, they had no path. But after praying to God and relying on God, they were enlightened by the Holy Spirit and were able to produce a lot of great works in a short period of time. When they produced these artworks, they experienced God's work and saw the deeds of God. Without the Holy Spirit's work and uh, His blessing, no one of them could have done this because they don't rely on their abilities, but on God. Well, for believers, inspiration comes from God. Uh, but even non-believers will say that artists are, uh, sometimes when they create, they become different. Uh, and. Uh, Americans like to say that uh, in arts there is a percentage of inspiration and a percentage of perspiration. Perspiration means sweating and meaning you should sweat a lot in training. Uh, dancing uh, in your musical is a good example because uh, I'm sure there is inspiration that shows these people uh, believe in God and do it for God, but I'm sure there is also perspiration, as the Americans would say, because they do the scene many times and they train and they repeat, so there is a lot of sweat and efforts going, going in, uh, in this. So, um, surely uh, the, the amateurs can produce something very good, but uh, uh, when I look at productions like Xiao Zhen, it's uh, uh, perhaps some of them are more than amateurs because uh, either they were trained before or were trained after leaving China, but uh, the quality is very much uh, 
professional quality and that's also true in most of your music the music uh, appears to be very professional professor you just mentioned that the artworks of the church convey to the audience the words and the way of almighty god according to one of your articles you said beauty is first an inherent feature of the words of almighty god described as uniformly beautiful and moving. The presence of Almighty God on earth is not only momentous and decisive, it also creates unprecedented beauty. One of the distinctive characters of the new kingdom of God is beauty. Professor, I totally agree with you on this point. Would you like to talk a bit more about it? Yes, from very early in the words of Almighty God, uh, we find words about the beauty. I believe uh, we can read the, the, the word appears in the flesh uh, as also the announcement of a new beauty. I mean, surely uh, Almighty God announces the truth, but uh, at the same time, uh, uh, truth, uh, when it enters the world, carries with it the beauty. That's a very old Christian theme, that, by the way, that the beautiful, uh, uh, the good, and the true uh, is very, it's a very old theme in Christianity. Uh, and I believe it's clearly announced by Almighty God uh, in uh, the word appears in the flesh, because we read there that uh, the, not only the words of God are beautiful in themselves, there is really this word, beautiful, uh, but also, I know there are no miracles uh, in the age of kingdom, uh, but uh, uh, there is a miracle of sort uh, in uh, uh, the fact that the, the beauty enters into the world. Uh, in my article, I've quoted a very impressive uh, passage in uh, the word appears in the flesh, uh, uh, where Almighty God says that when uh, uh, people return to God, uh, and when this uh, truth of God starts being spread into the world, uh, even the rivers and the forest and the sky become more beautiful. This seems to me uh, a very deep message and perhaps something which needs to be studied uh, by the few people outside the Church of Almighty God uh, who study the word appears in the flesh, because the, the theme of the beauty is perhaps a little bit neglected, uh, but uh, it's also important in the book. Professor Intravenian, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.